just wanted to show the reading room vibes for the fall. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Um, got these like little flickering like tea lights at the Halloween store and um, immediately decided that they would go on my bookshelf probably year round. I'm not going to move them. Hi. <laughs> oh my god, it's been a hot minute and the only reason I even or is like the only reason I'm making this TBR is because last night I watched um, I watched Cam Campbell do his like autumn TBR and I was like, oh, I need to do mine. I forgot about that. Um, so like the ones that I'm gonna be talking about aren't necessarily, it's not that they take place in fall and some of them are like Halloween-ish book reads. Um, but like, it's just because I feel like I wanna read them and I've had them for a while and I feel like they need to be read. <laughs> So, um, the first one that I'm reading is, I'm actually, I've already started it, is My Lady Jane, and it's by a bunch of authors, Cynthia Han, Brody Ashton, Jody Meadows. Um, I'm actually doing this in reverse order when you're supposed to, like, have read something before you watch the, like, cinematic depiction of it, but I watched My Lady Jane. It was a series on Prime, and I say was because it got canceled. Um, that's a sore subject. But this is like a retelling of Lady Jane Grey's story, who she was queen for like nine days, I think, um, and then she was beheaded. Um, so this is a retelling of her life, maybe what would have happened if she didn't get beheaded and she kept and she remained queen and there's also like fantasy elements in here there are magical people who are called ethians who have like a spirit animal where they turn into these animals um and they usually can control it but sometimes they can't wink wink there's people in this universe where that's like the main plot point and struggle <laughs> yeah it's just a retelling of her story and it's a ya and i haven't read a ya in a long time and I think they're so solid and can honestly help people get back into reading if you're, you've been in a slump, which has been me for the past month and a half. I haven't been able to read. I will start to read and if I'm liking something, I'll get maybe like a quarter of the way through and then something shitty will happen in the book that completely turns me off from it and I don't want to read it. So I felt like reading something where it's a YA that's already a leg up and then the other leg up is that I have consumed the media um beforehand and that's actually a recommendation I gave someone who isn't that much of a reader I told him hey you should like read books that you're already familiar with the universe in because that may help you want to like stick to reading it and finishing a story because you like know what's going on you know what's happening and you're invested but you know as is with novels you get a little more detail and it's like a better depiction of the universe than like movies or tv could ever do so my next one is called long live evil by sarah reese brennan and this i just was at the bookstore and i read the back page and it just says a tale for anyone who's ever fallen for the villain <laughs> it says as her whole life collapses ray still has books Dying, she seizes a second chance at living, a magical bargain that lets her enter the world of her favorite fantasy series. I mean, something about fall makes me want to read action-packed epic books. And I think that's because I read a lot of the Sarah J Moss and like Lee Bardugo and stuff during the fall and that felt it felt right. Like that felt it felt like that's where it belonged. The next one is The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle, which he also has another one that's come out called I'm Afraid You've Got Dragons, I think is the title that I really wanted to read, but this is his 
big one that he is known for. The unicorn lived in a lilac wood and she lived all alone, so she ventured out from the safety of the enchanted forest on a quest for others of her kind. I'm gonna experience maybe found family and that's my favorite trope of all time. And so I'm very excited to read this. Next one is The Love of My Afterlife by Kirsty Greenwood. A recently deceased woman meets the one in the afterlife waiting room, scoring a second chance at life and love. If she can find him on earth before 10 days are up. I just love, I do like reading normal romances, but I just love romance that has like fantasy magical element um, intertwined with it. That's why the like magical society of witches was one of my favorites, which was like, it had a little bit of romance in it, but the main plot was just like the witchiness and the fantasy element, which was really nice. But I just love like not, I do love, like I said, a standard romance novel, but I love, these are like top tier for me. I would be more willing to pick up like a fantasy. It's not a fantasy romance. It's a romance with fantasy elements in it. Cause there is romanticy, but that's like, I feel like that's a whole other category than like just romance with fantasy plotline. And then getting into more spookier stuff. This is What Moves the Dead by T. Kingfisher. It's a little novella. And it's a reimagining of Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. I've been watching the show with my husband as well as I listened to The Fall of the House of Usher poem or story from Edgar Allan Poe like a couple months ago. So I'm very interested to see how this will go. I am afraid I'm not, I'm not, I don't wanna say I'm not smart enough, but I'm not like, his writing is, obviously it's from an older point of view and older writing standards and stuff. So I feel like I'm in English class when I'm reading it, but I'm very interested in like the, a retelling of it and seeing a different point of view and maybe, I don't know. I love T. Kingfisher. Like she's really good at telling um, like fantastical worlds and stories and also kind of being groovy a little bit, which is perfect for this story. And then of course, like it says up here, The Queen of Mystery, Halloween Party by Agatha Christie. The Halloween Party Joyce, a hostile 13 year old boasts that she once witnessed a murder. When no one believes her, she storms off home, but within hours her body is found still in the house drowned in an apple bobbing tub. This would be my first Agatha Christie. I don't really like today's modern mysteries. Um, they kind of bore me a little bit. So I kind of want to see the queen of it see what her version of it is and maybe if I'll like it a little bit more. The next one is the first book in the Third Shift Society by Meredith Moriarty and um, this is a graphic novel which I really love to read also when I'm having reading slumps. This one was a webtoon that got published much like Laura Olympus and I think much like a lot of the graphic novels that I consume end up coincidentally and accidentally being webtoons that I was not aware of. Life's funny. One minute you're jobless, deep in debt, and on the verge of eviction. The next you're in a fight with a monster and getting a job working for a paranormal detective with the head of a jack-o'-lantern. It's an age-old story. So good. So cool. Perfect for Halloween. And I'm very excited to read it. I'm probably not even going to read a single one of these if my track record of not being able to finish a damn book. If you have any fall books that you think I should add to my list, let me know. Bye!